Welcome to Imperfect with Rebecca and Sandra. I am Sandra. Uh, Rebecca is on the other side here. Um, today, we're going to talk about <laughs> what's your name part two. That's the uh, unofficial title of episode one. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about um, the name of this podcast because we meant to do that in the first episode <laughs> and we forgot, which is um, part of why it's called Imperfect. There's lots of reasons why. Um, there was something I, was, I wanted to bring up, but it doesn't really matter right now. Um, like, <laughs> let's, let's just, I'll, I'll throw out the questions and we'll hopefully just answer them naturally. Um, why did we choose this name? And what are our plans for the podcast? And what do we what do we think we offer that other people don't? And why are you going to come back and chat with us? Um, that's what we hope to cover today. <laughs> yes. And I'm sure that we are going to go off on some random tangent on something completely different because this is how we are. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, what started it was we were both like, but what are we going to call it? <laughs> and I, I, Rebecca, if you follow her at all before this, you know she has had a blog. Um, with Boy Mom Bell, and she has a couple of taglines, and I was like, "What are your taglines?" Like, and I was like, and she's like, "I don't." Uh, sure, we're we're in text, by the way, because like she mentioned before, we don't call unless we know we have the time. And that would have been a really long conversation on accident. <laughs> yes, yes, it would have been. It will. We've we've even gotten a lot smarter about like writing notes to each other on a document instead of even text. Like, okay, we're going to be productive <laughs> with our texting now. <laughs> so we actually remember it, not having to go back through a text message. Like, what did we talk about? Yeah. Yeah. So my favorite tagline was um, perfectly imperfect. And um, yeah, so that was. Um, you ended most of your, uh, if not all of your blog. All of them, on, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was, um, my, it was more of like, a. the blog was more of like a, my own journaling kind of thing with it too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've done that. yeah. And it took up so much time. <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't have time for this, but, um, yeah. And that's kind of the other thing too, is, you know, we have, the whole background with the perfectly imperfect was that I was definitely going through uh, probably after I had kids where I just felt this need that I had to have everything perfect. I had to have mm -hmm. a clean house. I had to have, you know, my face on, if I left the house, I had to, um, you know, have everything like laid out and structured. And even though I'm still that way, to an extent, I have definitely gotten better. Um, my kids have even noticed that I've gotten better, but that was kind of my time where I was really grasping that, like realizing, acknowledging it, and just trying to accept myself for not being perfect. And like, we would be super boring <laughs> if we were perfect and we had no flaws. Cause I think, um, you know, sometimes with our flaws, that's makes us us and so unique so that was like so, my whole thing with that and sometimes it's actually what people love about us um it's funny though that's not the first thing she threw out she also has a tagline um something about sparkle what is oh, it leave, leave a exactly. little sparkle wherever you go <laughs> I was like no that's not the one I'm thinking of so then then she threw out oh perfectly imperfect I was like yeah and then I was I I think I did a little bit of a search and we're like okay that's kind of yes. used yeah. um so then we were talking about podcasts that we like to listen to and I started listening um I have been meaning to listen to it anyway so I started listening to live beautifully with Katrina Scott and uh, in either her first or second episode, she talks about imperfect and like we need to get rid of like our concept of imperfect and how it's negative. Um, and when you spell it out, it's I'm perfect. And I was like, that is so beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I was like, that's true. Like you are just, and it yeah. went back to yours, which is what I really wanted to include perfectly imperfect. Like, yeah. Yeah. 
So I was like, I think she just gave us, <laughs> I, think, I think Katrina Scott just gave us our name <laughs> and it. we both love it. <laughs> yes. I, and then you had me listen to her. I, um, I really liked her too. I end up listening, um, to like super random. <laughs> I sat with Andrew one the other day and I was like, okay, this one might be kind of fun. And then I was like, no. <laughs> Oh, I didn't, I didn't finish listening. I just listened to the intro. It got a little raunchy and I was like, mm. <laughs> um, so what was our other question? What are we going to offer? Oh yeah. So I think, um, like for me personally, um, just, I'm a huge empath. Like I, me too. Yeah. Like I, totally like caught on to that. I will to- like the energy around me. I totally mm-hmm. just soak it all in. Um, mm-hmm. and I also, wait, did you not know that before? I didn't No, It was actually my cousin, Patty, who was, we were talking one day and she was like, Oh, you are such a total empath. And I was like, I never even thought about it before. And how I have to be really careful about who I surround myself with because I will be completely drained. And I think that's part of like how we were talking before, um, you know, always being so extroverted, but there's times where it's like, I am so drained being around certain people. And I've had to really pay attention to that so that it's not like affecting me negatively because it will, it will just like completely eat me up and I have to like, like refresh, (laughs) just kind of, you know, take more time for myself to kind of um, like re-energize. Um, but I am also extremely indecisive yet very, um, I'm upfront, but not like in a rude way. Like I, I have my opinions about things, but I'm also extremely open-minded. Like I want to know other people's viewpoints and learn from that. And I have grown the more that I can be open-minded, the more that I, I feel like I've grown, um, it's also about like growing up too. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And I have a great ability to turn lemons into lemonade. Um, like just having just the, my having a, what was it that I, in cheerleading, my, uh, one, um, Nancy gave me the award of the rose colored glasses award. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I forgot about those awards. I it hasn't changed I much since then. <laughs> yes, um, yes. and so that's like my favorite thing though, is like staying in my own little bubble and then just making everybody in my little bubble happy and helping people. And, um, so I hope that, um, you know, I hope that I do make people happy. I feel like I do sometimes. <laughs> 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 I hope, yes, um, yes. so but what do you like, what's your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I hoped uh, to help bring a voice to people that maybe didn't feel like they were represented because that's, that's, I never, I don't think I even really told you this, but that is partially why I wanted to do this. Like I, I love Katrina Scott and I love, there are lots of people that I like to follow, but they're they're not like me. Their background doesn't seem much like me. And I've always felt that I've always been, I don't want to say an outcast because I was in sports and some people considered me popular, even though I didn't consider myself popular. Like there's like, cause I was, I had very strict parents, so I didn't go out much. And like, actually Rebecca was one of the few people that I did spend a lot of time (laughs) with and late at night. Um, so it, it was, it's, it's different. Like you feel like you're outcast and you're not. And, and I just want people to know that there are people like you that are Mexican American and don't speak any Spanish and, but their family are all migrant workers. Like there's, there's so many layers to people that you don't know until you get the courage to ask or someone decides that they want to talk about it. Like, yeah. and, and uh, it took me, it's still, it, you hear my voice shaking it still is a really hard thing for me to talk about which we will get to yeah. in other episodes because that's another big thing we want to bring up. Yeah. I agree um I yeah 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 actually yeah you probably yeah have a similar 
<laughs> like you said, with your Caucasian dad yes. talking about uh, your Irish, Scottish hat or hair today. <laughs> today. Um, my favorite was, uh, um, so I'll tell you my mom fails story today too. Um, so my mom and my dad, when they met in college, they, uh, my dad's name is Patrick. And my mom decided that St. Patrick's Day was going to be all about him. And so she would do everything green. She'd make a green dinner and she would celebrate him. And it was like this big thing because he has a New Year's Day birthday. And mm -hmm. so he kind of always, and right after Christmas too, it's kinda, my yeah. mom's birthday was two days after Christmas. So she totally felt for him, like, you know, it kind of sucks. And so growing up, it just, every year it just escalated and it got... <laughs> so big like it got to the point where we were like gifting celtic gifts <laughs> oh. like um i remember i found like a um a decant like a whiskey decanter or bourbon decanter mm -hmm. i don't remember what it was that i used to drink but um and it was like had celtic crystal designs in it and stuff i mean like we would go all out it was bigger than his birthday and then we would have this <laughs> special dinner and my parents would like decorate and we'd get gifts in the morning like we did too like it wasn't just my dad and so my sister when um because she started having kids much you know earlier than i did and so it just became this huge thing and i remember seeing it like it was so fun that she continued that so i continued it and i straight up forgot today. Like I was in work like midday, maybe around noon and somebody was talking about green. And I was like, you know, like what? And they're like, had, I look around and there's St. Patrick's day decorations. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like I didn't do anything. Like I was up at six or no, I was up way earlier that by training a virtual class at like six o'clock this morning, it's trying to make them quiet. Like they're used to coming out and having things all decorated, their birthdays, like everything. So and I, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even have like a special breakfast. I didn't do all the things I normally do. And so I was feeling really guilty. I didn't buy anything for dinner. Like, I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal, like okay. at yeah. all. But it was like that connection with my mom and it was a special day for my dad and my, you know, we just always made it so fun. And so I was totally beating myself <laughs> So we ordered pizza and got green toppings. <laughs> oh, nice. So yeah. Um, and so that is like, that was the time of year that I remember being excited to wear a shirt that says, kiss me, I'm Irish, because I obviously do not <laughs> yeah. look Irish. That's right. You did always like wear one too. Uh -huh. I can wear it because I am. And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't even really, I, probably, I don't even know how much, but anyway. Um, yeah. So it's funny because, um, like you don't, like you were saying, like it's maybe even as we get older and we kind of look back that, you know, but maybe it's to listening to people and you're starting to like, oh yeah, I like what they're saying, but it really doesn't resonate with me and mm -hmm. trying to give that voice. So I, um, no, I, I, that's one of the biggest reasons that you and I originally started talking about it and just having, <laughs> um, cause that's where our conversations would always go. <laughs> I was just going to say, honestly, as we're talking about it now, that's, that's probably a huge reason why we really connected. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and when you're younger, you don't realize you're having these serious conversations when you're having these serious conversations. And it was something that we like connected on without in like, in a way we probably, I didn't, at least I had never acknowledged or realized or anything. No, no, I'm, I'm honestly connecting it right now. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and yeah. And that's one of the things I think too, is, um, you know, when people would ask, like we talked about this in our last episode, like where we related and we'd always say, oh, we're sisters or oh, we're cousins or whatever, because we were like the only ones pretty much in our, like our group too, that looked different and different. looked alike. Um, it's funny because when we were talking about it last time, I was like looking at us, I'm like, we really don't look old. Not, no. <laughs> Maybe sort of when we smile, but no. <laughs> it was really funny. I was thinking about that. I'm like, Maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll have to, that's what we need to do. We need, next time we need to get pictures 
um, older pictures. Yeah. So we can put those up because I think that would be fun to see. Like maybe we did look more alike when we were younger. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I don't know. And my whole thought process too, like when we were first talking about this, like what are we going to bring that's different? Why should people keep, why should they even listen to us? You know, my first instinct was like, I want to help empower women. I want to help empower moms. But at the same time, I, um, I don't want to, you know, narrow it down so much where it's just moms. Like if right. you're a single dad or you're even dads get lost in parenthood or you don't have kids or you're wanting to have kids. Like, you know, there's so many different layers of that. And so I don't want it to be just mom life, you know, but, um, that's definitely what is, uh, closest to my heart because, you know, mom, and that's my whole world is, you know, mom life, but I have the same kind of conversations with people who aren't women or don't have kids. And, you know, maybe it can resonate with them too. Um, so we, we were talking about that earlier and, um, but I, you know, more than anything, just having like a positive, safe place. Yeah. Um, which like you had mentioned on the first episode, we, we definitely do for each other. We, <laughs> I'm trying to remember we really were more opposite when we were younger and for the life of me I can't even remember what those opposites me either <laughs> I'm, right now, I'm like no we're totally different or are we because <laughs> I was I was super optimistic as a teen and I, I have to admit I'm not quite as optimistic but having a I mean part of it was bad relationships and bad breakups and being in your 20s and not like having a, an idea of your life and then it not being that way and being the one thing we are very similar on and I it took me a long time to realize that is being a perfectionist oh my gosh I never I never thought I was a perfectionist until I like started reading about like people's like how to know you're a perfectionist essentially and I was like oh that's oh, why that I don't me. plan things and that's why like yes yeah that's me I was mm -hmm. like because I have a certain expectation and then I'm really upset from it when it doesn't, when I don't hit that mark, which yes. is, it's, it's a hard thing to break because, and, and perfectly imperfect is great to remind you. It does not need to be perfect because first of all, you're never going to get it <laughs> or we very are, rarely. And we're our own biggest critics. Like, Oh yeah. I, yeah. um, cause I, it wasn't an, actually until I got older, um, that I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, what are, what is other people going to think of me? Like it, when I was younger, it never, occurred. I was just kind of like, and probably because I had those rose, rose colored glasses, I was always in my own little bubble of my own world. Like I, my, I remember my parents were always like, we told you this. I'm like, no, you didn't. They're like, cause you were just in Becca's world. Like you weren't even, you weren't even present. I see this with my kids and I'm like, oh my gosh, who are your mother? But, um, <laughs> it's it really it wasn't until I was like older and um having more of those insecurities and probably just um that comparison of you know comparing oh, yourself yeah. to other people and like what that ideal image of you know what your life is supposed to be and yeah. Oh, yeah. those the path it's supposed to go and how you're supposed to look and how you know beauty standards and um mm -hmm. You know your it house really oh, it can be really rough yeah 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 but then also finding the right people to help you realize that yes. really that doesn't that doesn't necessarily matter as yep. long as you're you're healthy and you're happy and you have good relationships things things to help you through which we hope to be we that's what we are to each other but we hope to help other people with that too um yeah, because you have still, like you said, definitely kept those rose colored glasses. Um, our friend uh, had once when you were in Seattle, when we were still closer together, like three hours away instead of at least six. Yeah. Um, I, I remember a friend saying, uh, a mutual friend from high school, actually, I think I knew her since grade, yeah, grade, 
grade school. Cool. Uh, right, our, our small town. She was like, I like you the way you used to be. And honestly, I had no idea what she was talking about until I met my husband. And I started being my silly self again. I didn't realize how, how silly I was. <laughs> I, I, I think that was the optimistic side. Yes. It like it makes you silly. And I found a relationship that was healthy and I was silly again. Like yes. one of our best, one of our best dates, he took me um, to Seaside and there's a Tilt-A-Whirl there. And I didn't oh my know gosh. That. You remember it? Okay. See, I, I somehow missed that, even though I've been to Seaside a zillion times. Um, and we, we were, there were like maybe 10 other people on there, not even. And we were just like, you know, like kids turning it as hard as we could. I laughed the whole time. And I was like, oh yeah, it's amazing. Like just being silly and having fun. Like you don't have to be serious all the being time. Yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I and, remember- and, being so oh, shocked that you were even together because you were like, I'm going to keep them to myself because it's my happy little place. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I like, I was just not ready for it, but it was, it was great. Like those first, and it still is, but those first, like perhaps having someone see the type of person you are and you didn't even know that that person was gone in a sense like but you knew you were that person like oh and then he didn't he didn't think anything of me just laughing hysterically I think he loved it in fact I was <laughs> so <laughs> it was great like I was like oh right this is how life is supposed to be <laughs> yeah and just embracing the moment too and not getting so caught up in what should be and just like what is yeah so honestly it was really great of her to be like I liked you better before like it was a weird comment to me but like I needed something like that to like realize it and that was I don't know at least five years before if not even longer before (laughs) yeah like five probably five years before I met him because when when were you in when were you in federal way when was I what in the Seattle area uh so that was when I had QP oh my gosh <laughs> he just turned 14 <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's when you were oh like five gosh. years ago I was like mm. <laughs> uh so I mean he, not five years ago but about five years before I met okay yeah husband, that makes yeah. sense then yeah because he that would have been like four, yeah 14 and a half years ago because you came down I was pregnant wasn't I with QP I think I don't, I don't, maybe, I don't know. I was, did we go out? I think we went out. Oh, it was for yeah. my birthday. It was for my was birthday. Really? That's what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, but it was, yeah. Really? It was your birthday? It was my birthday. My 23rd that. birthday it was my golden birthday. <laughs> and you came all the way over and we went out and um, we went to the billiard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Bellevue. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That was yeah. fun. That was when I had those bangs. Yes. <laughs> you picture that. <laughs> I like that you're like, oh, wait. <laughs> it was like, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, that was. <laughs> Although I have to say, I did have bangs one time that I absolutely loved. Um, I don't even know if I have any pictures of it where they were like, they matched my, um, my widow's feet. Oh yeah. And they I came down to like a point. Oh my gosh. I did like those because I didn't have to curl them or anything. Those, I think back then was when I was curling my things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we're talking like 2007 guys. Like this wasn't even like, you know, 1990s bangs or anything that we're talking 2007 or, or even but, 2000. <laughs> oh my gosh. It wasn't even like cute side foot bangs. They were, Oh, I, I'm going to have to find them. I think I was like really wanting to like find my inner Betty page and it was just not. Oh, yes. Yes. That actually was the same time. You're right. That's totally what it was. Mm-hmm. I think it was. Oh my well, God. Well, I also had like a weird hairdo too. Cause I was growing out my like half pixie thing. Like it was really oh, short. Right. Yep. Gosh, like the, like the, what are they called? Yeah. So, a, so it was like a line. But like an but asymmetrical it was, A-line. Is that what they yeah, call no, it? No, 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 no. Yes, it was an asymmetrical like pixie because the other side was short. It was 
and I had a ton of hair and it's thick and coarse. So it like just stuck out. So I had to style it that way, <laughs> which is why I had the weird grow out afterwards. I was like, Sort of chin length. We have pictures. Oh I don't my know. Gosh. <laughs> We're going to have to find pictures because I like, I talk about cutting your hair short. So when I was pregnant with Dexter, um, QP was getting ready to go into school. And so I hadn't had like the experience of a kid in school yet. And so back in my, I, everything has to be perfect. Like in my mind, I had to get up in the morning. I had to be ready. I had to get them their full freaking breakfast. Like we're talking pancakes, sausage, eggs, banana, milk, like <laughs> maybe even something extra. Oh, talk about being extra. And then I would pack the, his lunch. I'd like cut it into like a dinosaur Our, with yeah. like broccoli for the trees and like heart-shaped freaking cheese. Like I'm not nice. even joking. <laughs> I did not know you did that. It um, was so ridiculously unnecessary and I'd leave little notes in his lunchbox. So not only was I was like, okay, I have to do all these things because otherwise I'm a bad mom. And then I was like, okay. And then I have to get up and I have to make sure I'm like all put together and everything. So I was like, how am I going to do that <laughs> with a baby? So it was like August and he wasn't due till December. And I decided I'm going to make things easy and I'm just going to chop off all my hair. So we went in, like my sister went with me. I think she even paid for it for my birthday present. And it was like, not as long as it is now, but I mean, we chopped my hair and then it was like, okay, it's still not easy to do. Let's go shorter. And then let's go shorter. Like to the point where it was like, they shaved That's my why you're head. Short. I remember. Oh I actually my gosh. And I was so large that the last thing I should have done was like, chop my hair. I was actually going to say, I have, I have a picture from behind of you of that actually. Cause we went to the library. I think maybe you had just had him like when I visited. Yeah. No. Cause I usually went in like around my birthday or in May. So it was after you had him for sure. That was, no, that was, no, that was no. Cause when you came to see Vico or when you came around the time I was, no, I was, was I pregnant? Oh my gosh. I Time has been anyway, crazy. I have, a, I have a picture of that. Cause I was like, I don't remember her hair being this short ever, yeah. but I had, a, I took a picture of you guys in the library. <laughs> thought it was cute or something. Or I thought you guys are, I don't know what I thought was cute, but I took a Back picture and be like, don't ever do this again. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that was my thought too. Cause I would, I would have done that. I still would. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, and then, cause I was thinking about the, the time I had Vico. So the third son. Mm -hmm. Um, I should just like refer to him. Like I always do one, two, and three. So number three was when you came and I still had my, um, clip in extensions from the wedding. Oh, uh, and yeah. so the picture that I was like, oh my gosh, my hair looks so pretty. And I was like, oh, it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, why did I cut my hair? Oh, you didn't. It was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, and I remember I would have to like curl my hair every single day. And then heaven forbid, I take a nap because it might ruin my hair and I'd have to start all over to go to the grocery store. Yeah. I'm not kidding. I was so, and that was like, especially when Quinn Patrick and Killian, so none, one and two, when they were like babies and they would take their three hour nap. And that was when I would scour my house and I would get all my things done and I'd make my grocery list and then they'd get up from their nap and we'd go to the store. So heaven forbid I took a nap too or something because I'd have to like redo myself. The amount of stress I put on myself trying to just be like that mom. <laughs> well, uh, it sounds like I actually thought about this today. I was like, we should talk about early momhood. <laughs> you're, you're doing part of it. Um, cause I'm, cause I'm a pandemic pregnant mom. So yeah. it's, it's really weird. I'm, I would, I, I'm wearing a hoodie, um, a, a tank top and literally my pajama pants. And that's what I put on when I got home from work. <laughs> I did go for a run. I'm wearing so. my, uh, kids wrestling. Yeah. Oh my, nice. <laughs> and I'm like, God, I am so lazy. Who is this person? I mean, I've always been lazy. Oh, no. I know that because, because not in dress, but like when it's morning where you would do all those things, uh -huh. I have never wanted to do all those things. I'm like, <laughs> I know I have long hair. 
always been in a ponytail um or or down sometimes yeah. um but then it'll be in a ponytail <laughs> I will I used to sometimes put makeup on sometimes I do now but I mean like as a kid I wouldn't even do it because I'm like that cuts into my precious staying in bedtime I want to be in bed as long as I can like I don't I, no breakfast uh, who are you yeah. so yes I would like to have that conversation yeah. just because I'm I'm curious like the difference between what I experienced, I was pregnant throughout the beginning of the, the yeah. pandemic. And then the second year of the pandemic, um, my child was born. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's been oh, an interesting, yes. interesting experience. We totally have that conversation because I um, am totally not the same mom that I was <laughs> at the beginning, okay. yeah. like yeah. night and day time. <laughs> To the point where even my kids will say, mom, you've come a long way. Like you've come um, a long way. Like they acknowledge it way. like as a like pat on the back, like good job, mom. <laughs> 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 and it's, it's, uh, yeah. And it's funny because, um, it's only been, <clears throat> it probably was like the pandemic when I quit worrying so much about like I, if I need to go to the store and I wasn't ready, I was like, okay, like, are we going to die? No, like you're going <laughs> to just go to the store <laughs> and, um, really just kind of, I mean, gosh, it, so like, this, I, I like to think that I'm in my twenties, but I'm like pushing 40. Okay. So. Right. It's taking me this long to acknowledge and accept that I am just fine the way that I am and, you know, taking care of myself is more important. So, yeah, I think it's really, it's just, I don't want to say just women in general, um, but it's the majority, it's really not. the majority of women, um, kind of feel yeah. like they have to, and not all women either. Like, but that was also the way I was raised my Grammy would be like, you don't leave the house without your face on. And there was a time where we were all having breakfast and I came out of the bathroom and I'm sitting down at breakfast and she's got her, like even breakfast placemats, like the fancy dinnerware. Like she was so just so amazingly at amazingly. She was amazingly, she was amazing at like having all these pretty things and making it seem so effortless. And mm -hmm. I just look at her and I was like, <laughs> I couldn't say my R. So I was like, Gammy, where's your lipstick? Just like so <laughs> disgusted that she wasn't wearing her lipstick. <laughs> but it's kind of her own fault. She did tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we we're eating breakfast. So of course you didn't put on your lipstick until you were done eating your breakfast. But it was just so, my, that was my mom's like favorite story because my Grammy thought it was so funny and you know, oh yeah. And so, but that's just how I was raised. It was, you know, although I am far from prim and proper. <laughs> anyway, no, it's true. Which you would, most people would not guess. And actually a lot of, uh, a lot of my etiquette stuff that I've learned is from my dad. In really? The military. Oh yeah. yeah. The military. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's like a like, whole different world too. Oh yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I, the only reason I even know is just from my first marriage. Like that was, you know, a whole different world that I, I mean, I, my family was, everybody was in the military except for my dad. Um, but yeah, we could even have a whole, we could go on forever about that too. We could. <laughs> um, <laughs> As you can see, we like to chat and actually we've even been in contact more and somehow we, we, we <laughs> go on tangents. Um, so we hope that you enjoy our tangents. Um, oh my gosh, we've only been talking for <laughs> Yeah, and, and that you wanna join us in these chats. Um, maybe someday we should do, um, I don't know, I guess on our Facebook, Ask some questions we'll answer oh, like, like pick, pick out some days yeah yes oh okay. I don't know how, I don't know when yet though <laughs> that was the other thing too that we like didn't even talk about last time is like where to find us 
Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. If you haven't found us yet. Um, we were just so excited to finally like get it going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have a Twitter. Uh, that one's a little less used. Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, uh, YouTube. You're probably watching us on YouTube. Uh, any, anything else I'm missing? Oh, Podbean. If you have Podbean, by chance. Um, Spotify, Apple. And Apple. Yes. And Apple is being a little weird though. So um, stay yeah. tuned. It, it yeah. might not be there yet, but definitely on Spotify. <laughs> yep. Spotify and Podbean. And so you can find us under Imperfect with Rebecca and Zandra or Imperfect W R and Z. So kind of. Yes shortened oh. for with yeah. Rebecca and Sandra. So it kind of ends up looking like Rand. <laughs> it does. It's weird. I like that. I don't know why I like, I liked it. And then I, I love it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, but that is so, it's so perfect for us. <laughs> yeah. So thank yep. you for joining. Um, really, we are trying to keep it uh, short yes. and sweet, 30, 30 minutes ish. Um, We'll see how this one goes. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you stay with us. Stay tuned for um, pod episode number three. I don't know if we've decided exactly what topic we're talking about, or did we? Uh, oh, were we talking about education? I think we were going to do. Yep, we were going to talk about um, our different paths of education and how uh, and our viewpoints on that. So. Uh, we got lots to talk about with that one. So um, no, that one might be long. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, uh, hopefully not. But <laughs> um, so yeah, if you guys um, have anything else that you um, have questions about, or you know, if there's any other topics that you would want to hear from us, then leave us a comment wherever you're listening to us at, or if you are following us on any of our social medias, um, then yep, then just give us a comment. Right. Give us a review so we have an idea of how we're doing and I um, hope you guys enjoyed this and it was good to catch up. Yes, like always. Yes. And we hope that you have an imperfectly perfect day. Nice yes. Weekend, whatever, wherever you're at. Uh, it's Thursday today, but we're going to be, this will be we're posting um, on Saturday. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be up on saturday march 19th and so we'll meet up with you guys next saturday all right, all right. see you later bye guys <laughs>